passion, meaning. A strong feeling of enthusiasm or excitement for, according to Britannica, one, a, a strong feeling of enthusiasm or excitement for something or about doing something. Everyone could see the passion in his approach to the work. All right, Shalom, Shalom. I want to give all praises, honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha, Kodash, double honest, to my apostles and elder bishops, here in Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's whole four elect, scattered abroad. All right, I'm the brother Taz of War from the GMS New Jersey camp. And just want to do a lesson on passion. You know, it's a lesson I've done before. If you've been watching the channel, right? And I want to touch back on that topic. I think it's a good time to touch on it. Because what is passion? Let's hear it again. Passion, meaning. A strong feeling of enthusiasm or excitement for. According to Britannica, one. A, a strong feeling of enthusiasm or excitement for something or about doing something. Everyone could see the passion in his approach to the work. Right. So excitement. You know, we have to be excited. And it's true. You know, when you first come into this thing and believe in Yahweh Bashmi, I was shy. And then you was taught. You was excited. You know, you were so excited that, you know, you might have went for most brothers and a few sisters as well. Because that's what this word do to you. You know, you telling everybody that, you know, who are Israelites because you figured now, you know, who the Israelites are and who the, the most highest chosen people is. And what happens is that excitement in you wants to tell the next person, you know, the next, you know, Israelite telling them that, you know, you know who you are in the Bible and things like that. That's that excitement, you know, which comes with that zeal, you know, scriptures tell us in um, Apostle Paul, Romans 10. He said uh, they have a zeal according to God, but not according to knowledge. So we have zeal, passion, but we have the knowledge, you know, unlike these uh, Bible Belt, Christianity, government churches, you know, they don't have the knowledge. They have a zeal, but not the knowledge. They're excited about going to church and it's not really excitement about learning about the Lord. It's really more excitement about, you know, gathering and pleasure of men you know pleasure of, of man and woman putting on clothes big hats going to the church showing off but um passion passion is key because no matter how long you've been in this truth if you have the true faith as a gift from the most high you're gonna have passion and you're gonna always have excitement about this truth you know so bear with me all right so the feeling of enthusiasm or excitement for a strong feeling of enthusiasm or excitement for something or about doing something everyone could see that the passion and his approach to the work and that's the work the work that we do in the lord is to teach the word the 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 effort you know to get into the camp every week you know the effort and giving diligence to make your calling election sure studying it shows right so this sentence here everyone could see the passion of his approach to the work and when others tune into the lesson and they come across your page they can see your passion toward the work of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai you know this is uh, so important man because you know being a sluggard lukewarm it ain't gonna cut it it's going to get you split. It's going to get you spit out, man. You know, out of the body that you want to be in. You want to be in the body of Yahweh Shai. You want to be joint heirs with Yahweh Shai. You know, you want that safe haven. You want the Lord to show mercy. You want to be of the Lord's elect. Scriptures say, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. So if you give diligence, that means your calling, being called, election right being the elect is sure sure for what salvation sure for you to be delivered give diligence to make your calling and election sure so by doing this work each and every day 
it becomes a way of conditioning, a way of life. Because that's what this truth is. It's not a fad, but phase, whatever, how you want to say it. It's not tempor It's not temporarily, it's a lifestyle. You know, we don't just, uh, you know, seasons in, then we doing it. And then when the season's out, we're not. All right. You got the mother camps for that. When the season's in, they go out. But when the seasons is out and it's winter, you know, they're not going out to teach the word on the highways and byways. When the Lord said, teach this world until he come. Now, of course, we use wisdom, you know, in the, you know, in the extremes of certain weathers, we use wisdom, right? We don't just go out there and be all in the rain. We get under something and still teach. The importance is, is getting out there. All right. The Most High, uh, do, do our Lord, Yahweh Shai, told us to feed the sheep, you know, and the work has to constantly go out because the Lord is always fulfilling the prophecy. We don't know when the Lord is going to fulfill prophecy. So to have passion is, is one of the ingredients that the elect is going to have being in his truth. You know, you got passion, passion, that excitement about the word. You can't wait for the brothers to come on and listen. You know, you might be at the job. You just want to put your headphones on and listen to the brothers lessons. You know, what's going on in Israel and what's the prophecies and what's coming down the pike so you could be prepared and ready. But you yourself might not be a teacher. You know, you contribute, you know, as, as much as you can, you know, and in hopes that the Lord forgive you of your sins. Passion, it ain't just for the brothers. It's for you sisters, too. Passion and praying, praying to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. You know, scripture say, pray, uh, Yahweh Shai said, pray without ceasing, you know. That excitement, the thought, the Lord should be in your thoughts every day. You know, it's not a day that don't go by that the Lord is not in our thoughts. Every day, the Lord is in our thoughts. All right. You at work, you home, you know, you. um. No matter where you may be. You know, no matter what you're going through, the Lord is in your thoughts. All right, you excited, you down, you in some sort of trouble, tribulation, the Lord is in your thoughts, you know? So let's uh, grab a few precepts, right? This is Matthew chapter six and 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust do corrupt and where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust do corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thou eye be single, thou whole body shall be full of light. But if thou eye be evil, thou whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? So let's go through it again. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moths and rust, moth and rust do corrupt and where thieves break through and steal because two thirds of the Lord's people that reject this word and don't consider they're, they're for the world, you know, they, they are for their flesh. So a lot of people, they want finer things in life. They will go out and put the time in if they, uh, you know, knowledgeable and knowing what to do. They put the time and the work in and they give their body as a sacrifice to have material things. All right. So it says, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth because you ain't supposed to for us brothers. Let me say for us men and you few sisters, you know, that believing in Yahweh Bashem El Shai, your time shouldn't be occupied and your uh, pleasure shouldn't be so much in the world. You know, trying to become a millionaire. You know, trying to become famous. You know, you want to be a part of the world. You're trying to be a TikToker or a content creator on YouTube. You know, now if it's to make some bucks for a product, cool. You know, but but trying to become famous. You know, when you showing your face and you being a content creator, you become trying to trying to become famous. You know, some sort of popularity, some way to make some money. You know, but um, 
It says, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust do corrupt and where thieves break through and steal because the things that you may possess, you may get, you may have in your possession, it could be taken away from you. It says, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth and rust do corrupt, corrupt and where thieves do not break through and steal because what's we store up in the heavens, right, with the work that we do, right, and hoping that the Lord you know, accepts our sacrifice. Whatever he accepts is stored up. No man could take that away from you. No man could come and, you know, swipe and take away what you work for. See, what you work for now could be all taken away from you. Right? So it says for, it says, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust do corrupt. And with these break through, with these do not break through nor still. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And that's another key point. You know, where your mind, where your treasure is, which treasure could be substitute with desire, right? There your heart will be also, meaning your mind. So where your desire is, is where your mind is going to be. So if you got your desires on things of the world, that's where your mind going to be. But if you have your desires on this truth, that's where your mind is going to be. So, you know, that's the that's the uh, question to ask yourself. Where's your treasure? Where's your desires at? Your desires and treasure is more for the world or is it more for this truth? Right? And if you have passion, it's going to be for this truth. You can have passion for things in the world. But if you have passion in this truth with the gift of faith, it's going to be toward your how about you, I was shy and teaching and pushing this truth. For the brothers, the prophets, the teachers, you know, you want the Lord to seal his elect. How is the Lord going to seal his elect? By them receiving this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the Lord. So therefore, the Lord put forth the prophets to do the work. That's how they're going to get sealed. That's how we're going to get out of here, right? Verse 22, the light of the body is the eye, and if therefore thy eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. So keep your focus on the Lord. Yeah, we got to deal with the world. We got to deal with responsibility. You know, you might have a hobby, but your main priority, first and foremost, is your how about Shemi was shot. And then everything else comes after. You know how good it feels when you put the Lord first. And then when you've done your work in the Lord, you can, you know, have your rest of the day. That feels good. Knowing that you did your work in the Lord and then the rest of the day, you got time to do what you want to do. Unless the Lord call you again, you got to put more work in. Sometimes it'd be like that. You might end up doing three, four lessons in one day, you know. But guess what? It's not burdensome because with passion and excitement, it's, it becomes uh, easy. You love it, you know. You don't get mad. Oh, man, I got to do another video. Nah, you might come across some news and go, dang, that's another. Ooh, let me make a quick video on this. You know, this is prophecy, you know, just as well as you may send it to a brother. Hey, brother, check that out. Just let him know. I'm about to do a lesson on that, too, though. Yo, the water, I appreciate it. He do a lesson on it, too. You know, but it's excitement. Right. You're not dragging your feet. You know, that's that passion, man, that the Lord gives. It says, verse 23, but if thou eye be evil, thou whole body shall be full of darkness if therefore thou light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? So, you know, use your brain, man. If somebody, you know, is being evil and wicked and not doing what the Lord said to do, well, how great is that darkness? You know, telling what they got going on. Ain't no telling, you know, what their mind is like, you know, in secret. That's why it's important to fear Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right? Take it day by day. Put your prayers up. Constantly, consistently pray. You know? To get by. For mercy, man. The days of trouble was coming. You know, I was just talking with one of the elders. And man, you know, we was just speaking on how... How, you know, humbly... In our humble opinions, you know, speaking on how how this thing may pan out come to come to pass when it's dealing with the MOTB you know 
and the brother said, <laughs> the elder said, uh, he said he getting chills right now, you know, because we was just speaking about sharing our information and our humble opinions about, you know, how this thing may just take off, how it may come down the pipe. Them declaring World War Three, you know, and at the same time, you know, could be locking down everybody, could be terrorist attacks, and then they coming in your homes, forcing you to take the MOTB, saying because of identity, you know, hey, this thing is going to come to pass, and it's going to come fast. Remember, when it comes, it's going to come upon all the world, and that's when I was like, yeah, man, you know, we at that time, Jacob's trouble. So, you know, being having passion in this truth is, is excitement is beautiful. You know, it's, it's the ingredient to endure. That's one of the main things as well. Endurance. Yahweh Shai said, he that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. You know? So, this is 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of the Most High. So when you do the work, you're doing it all to the glory of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. And we can't praise the Lord enough or give the Lord all the glory that he want or the glory that he deserves. We can't give the, the, the Most High all the glory that he deserves. All right. We want to, but we don't have that ability. We got to do what he said to do. And that's what brings him that glory. See, it's so important that, you know, let me, I'm thinking about women, your woman and shit, that it's important that she listens, right? It's important for us brothers to listen to order as well, right? You're part of the camp, you know, you got order and rank in your camp, you got a camp leader, you got brothers, sergeants, soldiers, you got brothers in line. It's important for you to listen to the order because the order makes, makes, makes things right. Right, it get, keeps things in its right perspective, and anything out of order brings confusion, which is Satan, you know, which is the adversary of what is right. So, your woman, you know, how you feel if you got a woman, you tell your woman on the phone, call her a couple hours ahead of time, hey, yo, could you do 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 do, please, Baba Shah, appreciate it, you know, and she here, okay, 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 boom. Then, when you get home, whatever. And they ain't do what they, you ain't, she ain't do. Oh, I forgot. You be mad. You be pissed the fuck off. Like, man, I told you, man. What's wrong with you? I had to do this. You should have stopped doing that and did what I said. Well, how much more the Heavenly Father when he looked down upon his men and he see them not doing according to what he said to do? That pisses him off, man. So what the Lord do? The scriptures say, if you lukewarm, right? He will splew you out of his mouth. Meaning you're going to be replaced. And which proves that you're just not one of the Lord's elect. See, the Most High is so cold with it, man. So omnipotent. All powerful, man. In so many ways that you can't even imagine. That he could raise a brother up. To teach brothers. And bring in brothers. Right? With the word that the Lord taught that man. The man of the Most High. And then remove the man of the most high. And one of the men that learned from the man of the most high is one of the elect. That's how cold the Lord can be, man. All right. The Lord can do what he liked. This is his movie. So it's very important to take this work seriously and get into your passion. When you got passion about working out, man, I got to lose weight. Summertime coming, I got to lose at least like 15 pounds, 6 to 10 pounds. You, you at the gym faithfully. You out there walking, running, doing whatever you got to do. You dieting right, going on your herbal detox, all that. And then you consistently doing it every day. You got passion, you got excitement behind it. You wake up in the morning, oh, let me make that smoothie. You know, oh, let me put them herbs in there. That's, that's excitement because you want to see results. Well, we want to see results when the Lord fucking destroy the wicked, man. You know, when he destroyed his wicked and uplift the righteous, man. Take us up on them on that chariot to check to have our bodies changed to be perfect to establish righteousness in this earth. That's what we want. That's the results that we want. Because other than that, we miserable. We in fucking hell with this devil, you know. And when if you already understand the vision of this devil's plan for you, you definitely don't want to live in that time. You don't want to live in his vision where you micro seed up, right? You marked. 
with the karagma. You know, you under a social credit system. Money ain't tangible no more. It's digital. You know, you can't even buy, even if you got the digital money, because you might not have the right behavior according to the, the mind control, a.k.a. government. This is their vision for you for, for the future. Them, them having more power over you, telling you what you can eat, what you can't. That's prison, man. All right? That's prison. When Shah said in John 10 and 10, he said, The thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy, but I am come to give life more abundantly. You see? Shah is going to give us life abundantly. And not only earth, but the other planets. That's in the most highest house. All right. In the outer space. Right. In the in the different galaxies, man. Which is infinity. We got other planets to get to. We got other big things to get to. You know, that we haven't we don't have access yet. But that's what's in store for us. Scriptures say, No, I know A have heard. Uh what's in store uh what the Lord had in store for his elect, roughly paraphrasing. And Baba Kusha, brothers could leave precepts. Baba Kusha, you could leave that precept. You know, uh, if you if you may, I appreciate it. The water, you know, helps the channel out. Helps uh, brothers who come across the channel to learn some precepts. I always say it for most of these videos. Now, the precepts is good, man. Apostles always bring it out. Some precepts, man. You know, we here to learn. You here to get edified, man. Which the word edify means to build. So what you're building upon, your faith toward Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All of us gonna have to have great faith in the end. We are at the end, but we ain't at the end end yet. This is the end, but it's just not yet. All right? Prophecy gotta be fulfilled. And then going in this time of Jacob's trouble, you wanna have great faith. Faith that you can move mountains, man. Faith as a grain of a mustard seed, man. Like Yahweh Shai said. You know, if you say to this sycamore tree, be removed and be cast into the ocean, it's going to obey you. And that's the level of the brothers that's going to receive that power. They're going to be on that level when the Lord activate that power through them, that spiritual power. Performing miracles, man, to wake up them 11 o'clock Israelites, you know, to believe in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So the Lord is still working even at the very end. You know, here it is, Jacob's trouble and it's the 11 o'clock. You know, you can't even teach, but guess who's going to be waking up? Them last few Israelites, the Lord's going to seal through the miracles and prophecies that the brothers will perform to give the honor and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. The same miracles that Yahweh Shai did, Apostle Paul, uh, 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 Elijah, Elisha, all the prophets who had the power, man, and performed miracles. Matter of fact, Yahweh Shai, our Lord, man, big bro, he even said we're going to do more things than he did, roughly paraphrasing. You can leave that preset, Baba Kushai. We're going to do more than what he did. And he raised the dead, man. I honestly, you know, maybe a, a elder, you know, could explain it a little bit. But, hey, you know, it's, it, don't, it don't, you know, we get up with each other, we talk, you know. But uh, me humbly... It's kind of hard to wrap my mind around what Yahweh Shah said that we're gonna do more work than him. We're gonna perform the miracles better, more miracles than he did. When I don't think I am humbly, I don't see what miracles we can top. That's gonna be what miracles he did. You know, he raised the dead. He walked on water. He turned. Uh, a low uh, 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 abundance of fishes, two fishes to abundance. You know, Yahweh Shai did a lot. Turn first miracle water to wine. All right, but Yahweh Shai said it. So therefore, for us brothers having his knowledge, it's important for us to have passion. If you ain't got passion, I don't know what to tell you. You 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 ain't got faith. Because passion run right in the right in the race of faith. It's faith. Passion is is because the passion is a court. The passion is the ingredient inside the faith. If that makes sense, you know, you got faith, but passion 
is inside the ingredients of faith. So if you ain't got passion, you ain't got faith. If you ain't got faith, you ain't got passion. Because if you have faith, you will have passion. You will be excited about this truth. Yeah, you know, uh, you sometimes, you know, you get used to the routine, you know, same old, same old. But at this point in time, it's excitement. It's exciting because there's so much news that's going on that you can't cover it all. It's so many things that are happening. Sinkholes, earthquakes, a room of wars. We literally at the breaking for them to declare World War III, which is a nuclear war. We at the point in time that any moment they can, you know, rush this micro sea hip down your throat. So this is exciting times. This is also the election year, 2024. You're going to have more protests and riots. It's going to start happening. Could be happening this summer or whoever. They're talking about lockdowns and another pan dim, you know, coming. Hey, it's so much going on. So let me move on. First Corinthians 9 and 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that you may obtain and every man that strive for the mastery is temperate in all things now temperate let me look this up right uh temp temperate uh temperate is used to describe a, no is this right oh it's used to describe a climate or a place which is never extremely hot or extremely cold so lock you let me do this. Let's go on to Google. I could just go on a blue letter. Temperate. This is the Marion Webster. The meaning of temperate is having a moderate, a moderated climate, which especially lacks extreme in temperatures. No. So I'm gonna have to go into the blue letter. So let's do that real quick. Hopefully it's not a long lesson. I'm about to close up. What was that? First Corinthians 25. This is uh first Corinthians 9 and 25, right? All right, temperate, which is a Greek word. Okay. Strong's G, 1467. Ekratuamai. Ekratuamai. It says to be self-controlled, continent, to exhibit self-government, conduct, one self -temporary, temperately, excuse me, be in a figurative drawing from athletes who in a preparing, who in preparing themselves for the games abstain from unwholesome food wine and sexual indulgence so temperate is self-control all right self-government is conduct which goes into behavior so let's bring the scripture back again right it says and every man that striveth for the for the mastery is temperate in all things so this means you have to have Matter of fact, let me go back into that. Let's lock you, right? Because if you're striving for your mastery, we're striving for perfection in this truth. You know, once we learn this word, we want to constantly and consistently grow. And we're striving for perfection to get better and better, right? To continue to constantly learn and grow, you know? So temperate, let me read that scripture again. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Temperate. Which temperate is what? Self-control. You got to have self-control. You got to have self-government. Meaning government, which is the mind. Right? So you got to have control over your mind. It says conduct. Conduct is behavior which goes into discipline. You know, it's a certain mannerism about you. It's a certain conduct you keep when learning this word and walking through this word. Or walking with the word. Right? Right? The Most High gives us this conduct, right? It says oneself temp temperately 
and a figure drawn from athletes because it's comparing to athletes now because you got athletes that that play a sport on a higher level they have to be temperate they have to have self-control in order to to play on that level to excel in that level right you got somebody that played basketball you went from the street street park playing to recreation recreation to a league then a league you in high school league then from high school college college and high school is two different levels it's the speed difference it's the speed is different just like football from high school to college the speed different is different you know meaning you're gonna have to train you're gonna want your body to be in the best shape to excel among these other great athletes on that level in college the height the levels the speed level is different from the basketball court to the football field right and then when you reach the nba or you reach the nfl that's another difference another level of conduct now you get professional you well you learn professionalism well let me say this if i'm saying that right you learn to be a professional right and when you get to college they teach you certain things you your level of growth you grow and more knowledge and things to do with your body then when you hit the nfl you got that bread now you got your uh your guy you got your trainer you know you know it's a different ball game but it says in the figure drawn from athletes who in preparing themselves for the games abstain from unwholesome food wine and sexual indulgence now when you check out boxes boxes uh with if they you know let's say uh devin haney versus ryan garcia all right but it's always a method to the madness you want to say but for the most part you want to make weight you got to make your weight showing you that you're a professional you make weight right um you might you're not gonna indulge in wine and liquor you gotta fight you want to be at your best so you refrain from those things okay you want to come into that fight at the tip top tip top shape you know you want to be on the top of your game so how much more us brothers teaching and serving yahweh bashim yahweh shai and pushing this truth we want to be at the tip top of our game you know we want to be in shape so when someone asks for the word and the breakdown you're able to give it to them through the spirit and power of yahweh bashim yahweh shai that's being in shape for us being able to go in, in and out or into the word, excuse me, going into the word and answering the questions that are at a, well, that answering the questions to someone that believes, man, should even cutting these devils up. All right. But the truth is we want to be in that, 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 that shape, that condition, right? Striving for our mastery. So that's that. All right. I wanted to add in another point as well. Because, you know, dealing with athletes and things and being in shape, you know, you have to be balanced. You know, now, of course, you got your days off. Not many days off, but a rest day. You might take one day off. You know, you might uh, relax yourself. Might have a brewski, you know, or some wine. It's the same as us brothers in this truth. You know, we're not robots. We are likened to robots. For your how about Shimmy, I was shy, but we also, you know, be balanced. You know, you might not do a lesson that day, but just sure know the next day you're gonna get right back to the work. So it's all in balance, man. You know, I was thinking about um, the fight that just happened with Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney. You know, seeing af being an athlete, Ryan wasn't in his tip top shape that he could be, but the Lord gave him that talent. That, that them fast hands and that powerful punch. So we Jake, man. You know, we're talented. We got gifts. So just keep this in mind, brothers. You know, not to be over-righteous. You know, but the point, of, the point of the message is, you know, you want to have passion, which is excitement. You want to strive for your mastery. You want to be perfect, even though we're not going to be perfect until the Lord changes us and makes his second return. But we have to strive for perfection that's the point all right let me continue um verse 26 i therefore so run as not uncertainly so fight i not as one that beateth the air but i keep under my body and bringeth it into subjection 
least that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway, should be a castaway. All right. So let's bring this last scripture out. Right. Matthews 24 and 14. And Yahweh went forth and, I, and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them. And he healed their sick. Now, there's a difference between passion and compassion, right? Compassion. Let's look that up. Uh, compassion is the feeling of pity, sympathy, and understanding for someone who is suffering. So Yahweh Shai had passion and he had compassion. All right. He showed his passion. We read in the beginning what passion is, right? In that sentence from Google. Let me go to that real quick. What was that? What was that again? What was it? Um, a strong feeling of a of a the uh, a strong feeling of a the enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. A strong feeling of enthusiasm or excitement for. A strong feeling of enthusiasm or excitement for something or about doing something. And then the sentence says, everyone could see the passion in his approach to the work. Yahweh Shai, when he told his mother, Mary, he said, I'm about my father's business. That showed you his passion. When Yahweh Shai was searching for his disciples, right? When he went on his journey to do the work, his ministry, that showed you his passion. When he taught, when he spoke, he spoke what? Yeah, he spoke in parables because it wasn't for all to get. But that showed forth his passion to do the work. Right? And then it also says how he had compassion. So when we go into compassion, right? With certain with the Israelites, he showed forth, he showed, he showed forth pity. Right? The feeling of pity, sympathy. He had sympathy. And it says under and understanding for someone who was suffering. He had understanding for us that was suffering. All right. He healed the sick. He healed the lame. He healed the blind. He healed the maimed. You know. So Yahweh Shai had passion and he had compassion. We got to have the same. So Lord willing, I hope this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praises, honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. Bahashim, Raka, Kodash, double honors to my apostles, elder bishops, here in Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad. Shalom.